Ooh, it's dark. Sound sounds good. Wide angle. Okay, we begin our ascension. This is really exciting because it's been first time backcountry ski touring. I know it sounds silly. Actually, does it? I don't know. I know this is Ben's first time backcountry ski touring and I'm super excited to take a good friend of mine do something they've never done. I love that, especially in Montana. Man, look at all the big trees and the light. It's gonna be a good day. Look at that hill, look at the flat ground. That hill looks quite steep. Um, but we have good teachers, so I think it'll be fun. So the only way to learn is to send. One of the things that I admire a lot in Ben is that he's super determined. Like, look at him now. Oh, that's cool. Tucker! Look at him now. He's been skiing for, what, seven days total in his life? And look where he is. Up there, just in deep pow, <laughs> in the backcountry, skinning for the first time. <laughs> this is epic. Who does that? I'm really proud he's doing that. that we can just make our track, you know, anywhere. Yeah. And then you're like, it's much better than hiking. Oh yeah. Because there's no obstacle, there's no this branch. This is like a freaking mind-blowing experience, how easy it is to just go over the deep snow. Yeah, imagine walking here, <laughs> so much snow. Glad cool. we're doing this together, mate. Yeah, mate. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So Ben, earlier you said something I thought was quite interesting before we were gonna ski up this pretty steep chute. <laughs> we're like, oh, this is, you know, you just gotta push yourself. And you said, it's kind of the story of my life lately. So <laughs> do you like a pursuit? Do you always end up doing this kind of stuff? I think the last few years of my life are built on that pursuit. Um, That's what I Moved thinking. to Iceland with no prospects. I just love photography and found a way to make it work and through that, I've learned to deal with stress quite well. That's what I was saying, yeah, he handles the stress really well. <laughs> so, with that said, um, let's get the focus right. All right. With that said, um, you love a good pursuit. Do you think it's important for people to pursue their own creative style? <laughs> I think that more so, it's important to pursue your own story. Okay. People have a tendency to follow other people's stories because it may seem cool or inspiring like trend hopping but, yeah but everyone has their own story and there's always something interesting about it even if it's maybe not as extreme as other people there's yeah. always something to tell and diving deep into that gets you to a place that's way more authentic than following someone else's story just for okay yeah but that's my I, okay and what okay so my interpretation well i like it i'm kind of shaking i'm like shit <laughs> okay, let's bring it back then to how a story no, no, can become a style. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Okay, now, so we've talked about the story. I understand it's more authentic. It's, I mean, I hate that word. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's more personal to you, right? Yeah. So, to find yourself, you need to go into these pursuits. Mm -hmm. um, but if you just look at the example of having an aesthetic style, 
why is that important nowadays or before or whatever? Yeah. Having your own style, mm -hmm. following your, your own path with photography can set you aside from, from other people Just and maybe yeah, help push and give you your own identity in the market. And for me, I went what into a new do? environment. Um, I had to find my own perception of this place that I was surrounded by. And Iceland? now, you know, going on to be just the north and the snow. Arctic. You're expanding. And, and after a while of photographing lots of things, you'll work out specific elements that, that tie your, your overall, um, that tie together your interests in photography. And you'll work out specific color schemes, specific compositions ways of editing and that you'll notice repetition beginning in your work and that is how a style begins when you're starting to scratch the surface i think yes. yeah so there's got to be a lot of repetition yeah repetition consistency the two keys to it but not jumping into a style that's maybe predetermined by the Somebody popular yeah, yeah. you know works on the internet um it's cool to try a bunch of things yeah, and then tie it back and maybe you'll end up with some sort of new style so experiment and do it over and over again. Yeah. Kind of like skiing, yeah? Skiing. <laughs> We're doing it right now. <laughs> day seven, day seven of skis for Ben. And we're in that country of Montana with some pretty deep snow and she's just been sending it. <laughs> so. It's the only way to learn. We'll see on the way down. I'm excited for that part. We'll talk <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> Man down. Okay. Yeah, it's the this guy. Oh, this guy. Bollocks. <laughs> Team Mini. So you just came down from your first powder run. First ever. First ever powder run. How was that? <laughs> Didn't make any sense at the start, but after a few goes, then it started to progress quite well. Yeah, some good turns yeah. at the bottom. It's more just a fear thing. And it's also, for me, I like to be able to know what's coming. And when I have no idea what's coming, like I've never turned on this type of snow. So you don't know what's gonna happen? I don't know what's gonna happen, so <laughs> I'm naturally gonna try and stop and understand in the beginning yeah it's, like you said it's repetition earlier on we've talked about the journey to finding your aesthetic your identity pretty much yeah. uh, what would you tell somebody <laughs> who's like okay cool ben you know that's how you did it you know how should i start mm -hmm. i always like to say the first step is to go out with an open mind and take photos or videos of a bunch of different subjects so for me it was macro it was beachscapes, it was nightscapes in the city, astrophotography, and through those different methods, I discovered a lot about settings of cameras and how they work. And then naturally, over time, maybe over a few months or even longer, you'll begin to work out what type of photos interest you the most. And maybe they'll have the same color palette, they'll have the same theme. And over time, this can turn into a style. And if you don't force it in the beginning and you go in with an open mind, that's when you can create something that, you know, perhaps has never been seen before or at least is your own interpretation of it. Don't force it. I yeah. love that. Don't force it. So just try kind of innocently things. Yeah. Bunch of things. I remember photographing a wasp. Uh, I had my lens held up to the camera backwards. It was a 51 2. And the wasp <laughs> jumped onto the lens. And I freaked out because I was looking through the viewfinder <laughs> and dropped the lens. And uh, clunk, yeah, clunk <laughs> that sucked. So that's how you learn, just like now. You've been you had quite the icy mustache. You want to talk about that? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I've dropped myself quite a few times today, <laughs> trooper. But, though, yeah, I, I don't even know how you were talking to the camera after <laughs> all the exertion you've been doing. Uh, I think it's good. Eight skis in or whatever, nine good. skis in. It's impressive. Good work, mate. Cheers.